Hey, 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 what's going on, all you beautiful people? My name is Antoinette Staples, and I'm super excited that you decided to check out my YouTube channel this week. You could be doing anything else with your time, but you're not. You're here watching or listening to this video from me, so I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are new to my channel, hey, if you're welcome, if you're returning back, welcome back. Whether you're new or returning, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave so you can get notifications every time I post a video. Listen, if this video blesses you, as I always say, make sure you let me know, write a comment below. It's been about a month since I've had a video, so I want to hear from y'all. I miss y'all. So make sure you write a video, write a, I mean, write a video, um, a video, write a comment on the video so that I can respond to you. I'm so super excited to have y'all this week, and I hope and I pray that this message blesses you. And so I'm not before you long. Let me go ahead and get into this week's message. The title of this week's message is Looking for an Answer. Looking for an answer. And maybe you're in that space right now or you have been in the past where you have just really been saying, Lord, I need an answer and I need you to help me out. Lord, I'm looking for an answer. And so because of that, we're in the um, scripture this week in Daniel 2. And we're going to start reading at verse 16. All right. So it says, so Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah his companions, that they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret. So that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So God, so Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Going on into verse 20, it says, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what's in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. You have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand, all right? And so I want to thank the Lord for his word. May he add a blessing to the hearing reading and doing of his word. Y'all, I'm so excited about this. I've been reading all throughout Daniel over the last few days. And so I want to remind you that this week's video is titled Looking for an Answer. Looking for an Answer. Have you ever been so desperate in such a desperate place that you're looking for an answer and you almost will receive it from anyone, everyone, any anyone that's around, anyone that could possibly be a solution for you? You're hoping that they are the answer because you're so desperate. Well, here's the king, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was actually looking for an answer, had a dream that troubled him. And so because of that, he wanted it to be interpreted. And so he went to the Chaldeans and the wise men and he's like, somebody has to be able to interpret this dream for me. But the reality was that no one at that point in time could interpret the dream. The king was so angry that he said, all right, since none of y'all can seem to interpret this dream for me, it looks like all of y'all gonna die, okay? So he wanna kill everybody. Now, everybody, nobody can interpret this dream for me, so, so y'all got to go. All y'all, y'all got, your life is over, and um, I, I don't really care what other, other things you had planned for your life is over as you know it, because you can't interpret this dream. And so I'm being lighthearted, but in this, the king was looking for an answer, and he was so desperate to get the answer that he wanted to hear it from anyone, all right? And so when you look in verse uh, verses one through four in the in the scripture, it says that he begins to say, who can interpret this dream for me? And in verse four, it says, then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream 
and we will give you the interpretation. And so some of us are in a space where we're so desperate for the answer that we'll tell people our dream who can truly interpret it for us. We're looking for an answer. You're looking for an interpretation. God spoke something in your spirit. There's something that God wants you to receive. And because you're so desperate for an answer, you'll share it with anybody who appears to be wise. Anybody who should normally and readily have an answer, you're willing to share it with them. And so you say, they come to you and they say, well, tell me a little bit about your dream. Tell me a little bit about your vision and I'll have an answer for you. I'll give you a solution. I'll tell you what it is that you want to hear, right? And so the king was, he was on to them and he knew, he was like, no, nah, you're not gonna be able to interpret my dream for me, but right, really what you're gonna do is try to tell me what you think I wanna hear. Come on, I know I had to be speaking to somebody, some, somebody right now that you've been trying to figure out what is it that the Lord is saying to you and you're so desperate to find out that you would tell anybody, everybody, and anybody that appears to be wise, you believe that they have the answer. You believe that it is that they have what it is that you need. And so you set up on that, but not the king. No, he said, I know you're just going to tell me what it is that I want. And he was infuriated and he was angry, right? But then here comes Daniel. And Daniel realizes that there's a hit out on his life, not only for him, but his companions, all the wise men of Babylon, because they cannot interpret the king's dream. And so... We start with the text in verse 16. And when we start with the text in 16, it says, So Daniel went in and he asked the king, Give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his companions. And Daniel went to his companions and he said that they may seek mercies from the God of heaven right? That they may seek mercies from the God of heaven, that they may not perish like the rest of the wise men in Babylon. So when Daniel knew that the king had a need, he understood that the king was looking for an answer and Daniel showed up like he was the answer. So I want y'all to repeat after me and say, I am the answer. I am the answer. Not because he had the answer. Not because he already interpreted dreams. Not because the Lord had already told him what King Nebuchadnezzar was dreaming about. Nor had the Lord already given him a vision. But Daniel showed up like he was the answer. Some of you don't realize that you're looking for an answer, but you are the answer. See, the Chaldean said, King, what you ask for is not possible in the flesh. There's no one here in this earth that is currently existing, that is living right now, that can give you the answer that you seek. And that's what happens when you look for the answer in the flesh. But Daniel, knew he was the answer. He showed up like the answer. He went to his companions, he asked for prayer, and he said, go seek the God, right? Go seek the God of heaven. May we obtain mercy from him. Go seek the God of heaven. He is the answer. We are connected to the answer. And so because we're connected to the answer, that means I can show up and promise the king that I am the answer. You're looking for an answer, but God wants you to know as long as you realize you're connected to the answer, if you seek the answer, you are the answer. You are the answer. Repeat after me. I am the answer. I am the answer because I am connected to the answer. Not because it's something that I've already done. Not because it's something that I'm familiar with. Not it's because it's something that I'm capable of. It is because the God in me is capable. It is because I am connected to the God that's capable. It is because I am connected to the God that understands and knows. And there is nothing that surpasses his wisdom, right? And his infinite knowledge. And so because of that, I can show up in a room like I am the answer. I don't look for the problem. I look for the fact that I am the solution. And when it's something that I encounter that I've never experienced before, that is scary and afraid, something that says it will take me out. I don't go and retreat. I stand up in the truth that I am the answer because I am.
connected to the answer. You're looking for an answer, but God is saying to you through this word that he's shared with me, you are the answer. And you need to make sure, one, that you are connected with people who know who the answer is. When Daniel went to his companions, he didn't go asking for their opinion. He didn't go say, did the Lord speak to you or do you have an idea about the king's dream? He said, go and seek the God of heaven that we should get mercy from him. Go and seek him. And so I want to say, if you're going to show up like the answer, you got to stop asking for opinions and begin asking for prayers. Go stop asking for opinions and start asking for prayers. If you want to see what it is that God is giving you the solution to, you can't seek the opinion of people. Instead, you have to seek the prayers of your companions. The people who are willing to go through the fire with you. If y'all been through Daniel, you know that they're going to be going through the fire with Daniel. But you want to go through the people who want to go through the fire with you and they're not afraid to seek the Lord for an answer. They don't want to give you their opinion, right? They will, Instead, they want to give you an answer from the Lord. As a matter of fact, they were quiet because they trusted God to give the answer, all right? And so here it is, Daniel sought out his companions and he asked for prayer, all right? And then we see that the Lord visited him and it says, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. You're looking for an answer. But when you understand that you are at the answer because you're connected to the answer, you don't have to seek it out. The Lord will reveal it to you just like he did to Daniel. And it says then the secret was revealed. The solution, the answer, the problem that you're trying to solve, God is saying, I'll give it to you. I'll reveal it to you in secret while you're sleeping, while you're not even thinking about it. I'll come to you in the nighttime and I will give you the solution it is that you're looking for. Stop looking for the answer and start looking for me. Get connected to me. Get rooted in me understand that I am the answer and as long as you stay connected to me you will be the answer all right and so it goes on and says how Daniel praises the Lord and he says I thank you this is in verse 23 I thank you and praise you O God of my fathers for you have given me wisdom and might you've given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you for you have made known to us the king's demand. Here comes the king and he was looking for an answer. And you helped me to show up like the answer. And in that, God, I can only thank you. I can only praise you. I can only glorify you. Hallelujah. I am the answer. Somebody repeat after me. I am the answer. Lord, you sought, we sought after you and you gave us exactly what it is we requested. Lord, there's some other people whose lives depend on me being the answer. And I need you to understand that your life is that important. See, they were set out to kill not only Daniel, but his companions and all the wise man in Babylon, your life, your answer, you being the answer, someone else's life depends on it. Your life depends on it. You've got to see God understanding that you are the answer to someone's problem. You are the answer to save someone's life. Yeah, your life is meaningful and it's valuable just because of that, because you are the answer. So Daniel said, Lord, we thank you because you have answered us. You have given us exactly what it is that we've asked of you. You have made known to us what it is that we've asked of you. Do you know that you're favored? See, Daniel was favored with the Lord, all right? Do you know that you have companions that will pray with you, all right, and pray for you? Do you have the courage to stand even when it appears that no one else around you could possibly have the answer? Will you stand anyway, trusting and believing you are the answer? God said you are the answer. You're connected to the answer. He will deliver the answer through you regardless of what it looks like. Anyone else is capable of understanding that we serve a capable God. He has all the answers that we need. And as long as we stay connected to him, we are connected and, and grounded in the answer. Answer. So we are the answer when we show up and when you believe that you walk in a room differently, you walk into a conversation differently, you approach a king, you'll 
approach people who seem in high places, who might not even say that you're welcome, who might not even believe that you have what it is that they need, but you stand firm in knowing that you are the answer. You are the answer. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to be on a radio show, and on that radio show, the woman spoke about making soaps, and uh, uh, her name was Noby Lynn. Oh my goodness, Noby Lynn Soap something. You guys just search that on Instagram. I'm sure you'll find her, but um, she was talking about how someone came to her, and they said, I want you to make soap out of cooking oil and beer. All right, some cooking oil and some beer. And they said, I'm pretty certain that you couldn't do it. And so she said, I love a challenge because when someone tells me that I can't, I know that I can. And she said, and it had never been done before, but in the end, she made soap out of cooking oil and beer. And you might think to yourself, why would anybody want that? Why would anybody care about that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She was the solution. She was an answer, right, to someone's need, to someone's question. And so I was watching a, a video with T.D. Jakes and he says, everyone's looking for a solution and no one is looking for a problem. Stop showing up in the room like you're the problem. Stop showing up in the room talking about what you can't do and start showing up with what you can do. Start showing up like you are the answer because you are the answer your life depends on it someone else's life depends on it you are the answer i hope and i pray that this video blessed y'all if it did make sure you let me know write a comment below y'all let's go to the lord in prayer most gracious and heavenly father we thank you god we thank you for being the answer lord god when no one else can seem to solve problems you'll send us in to solve the problem when no one else seems to have a solution, you'll send us in with a solution. God, we thank you that we won't meet every need and every request with a no, but instead you'll help us to say yes. God, we thank you that as long as we stay connected to you, as long as we seek you, Lord God, as long as we, we trust in you and believe in you and are obedient to you, oh God, that you will give us everything that we need. So we thank you, Lord God, for showing up in us and being the answer in us, Lord God, delivering the answer through us. God, you are a faithful God, and so we love you and we praise you. God, we honor you on today, and we thank you, Lord, for using us, for choosing us, for the giftings that you've given each and every viewer on today, Lord God. They're looking for answers, God, but you just wanted them to know that they are the answer as long as they stay connected to you. Oh, God, and so we just thank you now. We praise you and we glorify you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Again, y'all, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope and I pray that this video was a blessing to you. Um, remember, there are so many problems, so many things going on all around the world. So many people are looking for answers. And so many people are looking for solutions. Don't be so quick to always give an opinion. Seek the Lord in prayer. The Lord will deliver it to them. At some seasons of our life, we don't need to know what other people have to say. We just need to know what God has to say. See, it wouldn't have done Daniel any good if he had listened, if he had requested the opinions of his friends, if he had asked them if they had interpreted dreams, if they knew any of that. No, it wouldn't do him any good because he wouldn't be able to really truly interpret the king's dream. He needed it to be revealed from the Father. He needed it to be revealed from God. And so instead of his friends giving opinions, they sought the Lord in prayer. And then David, I mean, excuse me, then Daniel was given the, the answer that he needed. So don't be so quick to give people opinions. Sometimes we don't, we don't have the answer, but God has the answer. So we got to go to people, go to God on people's behalf. All right. So I hope and I pray this video bless you again. If it did, let me know. Write a comment below. I, ho I, I hope you all have a blessed week, a joyful week. I am the answer. I am the answer. Remember, you are the answer. God bless y'all. It's time we all put on our wings and soar.